Y'all doing okay? See how fast that video was? <laughs> Didn't even see it, did you? Well, welcome. It's good to see you. Glad you guys made it out on such a beautiful evening. <laughs> Thanks for letting nothing stop you. Not even the, yeah, Cristo Ball. <laughs> I wonder who comes up with these names. But uh, I don't know. That's a, that's a good one. Well, hey, I'm so glad that you guys are here. And uh, we're going to... Uh, wrap up our series uh, tonight, but I do want to uh, take a moment and just thank our volunteers that have been working these past few weeks that have been cleaning this place and opening the door for you and uh, fi- you know pouring your coffee for you and cleaning the restrooms after every use. Uh, they've been doing an outstanding job, absolutely. Let them know. They've been doing a really good job, and I appreciate them very much. So, uh, hey, we're, we, we made it. So Friday's the day that we close. We get to close on the property, and uh, looking forward to that. And uh, can't wait till we can uh, bust, bust through that barricade and get out there and get to work and turn that into a beautiful, beautiful location for our new home. And so, uh, anyway, um, like I said, I want to close out the series today, and, I, and I'm just... I can't tell you how excited I am about this. We've been, it's, it's been a rough uh, few weeks just talking about some things that as, as believers, you know, we can expect uh, to go through some things in these last days of uncertainty. And, you know, we can expect to uh, endure persecutions. Um, we talked the first week, though, about how uh, God is sovereign over everything. He's sovereign over all of creation, and he's sovereign over over my life, and just how we just finished singing that song, you know, God is absolutely sovereign over everything. And, and then we talked about how, hey, God, God does not desire for us to have to worry about certain things in our life. He said, listen, I'll take care of your basic needs. I want you to go out there, and I want you to live life, man, live life to the full. I want you to be the best husband or wife you can be. I want you to be the best parent that you can be. I want you to be the best employee you can be. I want you to be the best Christian that you can be. And listen, leave the rest to me. Let me worry about your food and your clothing and and your shelter and all of those basic needs that I know that you have. God says, I'll take care of that. You don't worry about that. You go live your life and do the best that you can to be an example uh, to others of my love, of the fact that I am taking care of you, of the fact that I have something to to offer all of humanity. So you go out there and you be the example for that. And then last week, uh, what did we talk about last week? We talked about uh, days of uncertainty, how, you know, we can expect persecution. And, and, and how, what are the ways that we experience persecution? There's many, many forms of how persecution comes anywhere from from deception all the way to to violence and and anything in between that the enemy would use to try to uh, bring persecution uh, into our life but we know that we serve a God that gives us the strength that we need to get through it now we might be sitting here thinking can I can I really make it through this persecution and it's up until that very moment when we start experiencing that persecution that God's strength just is infused in us and gives us the strength and the courage and the boldness to just keep going, just make it through that persecution. And so today, I, I want to talk about something that uh, uh, I think is, is just, just proves how much uh, God loves us. You know, he, he loves you. I don't know if you know that, but, but God loves you. You know, he sent his son to die on the cross for you so that you can experience eternal life in heaven. But you know what? That's just the beginning. That's just the beginning. You know, there's so many people out there that they're, they're, just, they're just happy with that. They just, you know, I, I, I got saved. I got my fire insurance. I'm going to heaven. You know, I'm good. Just, just let me chill out the rest of my life. But God is like, there, there is, there's so much more to heaven than just your salvation. He says, listen, it's my will that nobody should perish, but everybody should experience eternal life. So, listen, his expectation is everybody's going. His will is that everybody gets to experience eternal life in heaven. Now, now we know that that's not 
true because the Bible also says that wide is the road to destruction and many find it. Narrow is the way to life and only few find that. But it is God's will that all of us experience eternal life. But he's like, look, that's just the beginning. He said, salvation, that's a free gift. I'm just giving that to you. you, you all you have to do is believe, and, and you can have it. You can, you can have heaven. But I've got so much more for those of you that want more. So, so if you want more, then, uh, then this message is, is for you. But uh, getting a little bit ahead of myself. Um, so, it's, so it's easy uh, to look out you know, past today and look, look out into tomorrow. And, and uh, you know, it's easy to have these questions like, uh, you know, what's the point? You know, what's, what's the point of all of this? I, I'm, I'm watching before my eyes my country just destroy itself. What's the point? <laughs> you know, you start asking those questions to yourself. What's the point? Is it worth it? Is it, is it even worth it to, to try? Is it even worth it to let my voice be heard? Is it, is it even worth it? Why, why bother? I mean, here we are in the last days, and the Bible says this is what we can expect to see, so why, why bother trying to make it better? Why, why, why bother trying to let my light shine? And, and, and I would say that, that for the church, for the church, that this is our moment. You know, we've been going through a period of time where we've been, uh, where we've been comfortable, where we've experienced uh, good and abundance, and, and everybody's got what they need and, and plus some, and, and we're just in a real good place. And, and, and those kinds of times like that really silence us. You know, they, they really, it really keeps us from being able to go out there and change anybody's life because, hey, my 401K is up here. My job is up here. My life is up here. Why do I need him? And so it really challenges the church because we really, how can anybody on this earth experience something better than that? Because this is all that they're living for. As believers, we're living for something else. We're living for something that's coming, that's in the, that's in the future. But it's hard to get somebody to understand that when life is good. It's hard. Most of the time, people will come to Christ when they are at the very lowest place of their life. They've got nowhere else to go. And so here we are. Our country is being destroyed right before our eyes. It's our moment. It's the church's opportunity to shine, to say, hey, we don't care what happens on this planet. We're not living for this planet. We're living for the next life. We're living for eternal life in heaven. And so this is our moment. This is our opportunity. Corey Ten Boom, she says this. She says, in darkness, God's truth shines most clear. I hate that. Because there has to be darkness in order for God's truth to shine. Well, guess what? It's pretty dark out there right now. It's pretty dark, and it's a pretty good opportunity for Christ's light to shine in the darkness of what's going on in our world. And I'm going to try to convince you tonight that we need to try as hard as we can, harder than we've ever tried before, to try to take that light, try to take that truth out there into the darkness because we need to save as many as we can save. But not only that, we get something for it. How cool is that? We always want something for what we're doing, right? God's like, I get it. I'm going to give you something. If you'll go out there in the darkness and do what I ask you to do. So this is the church's opportunity to fill, listen to me, to fill its heavenly trophy case. We, we always like to uh, awards, right? We like to win awards and, and uh, get those trophies and put them on our, our, our chest at, at home. And, man, growing up I had, a, I had a, a, a countertop just full of trophies. And, and, and what Scripture said is absolutely true. All they did was collect dust. But, hey, they were fun to win. They were, it was fun to go out there and compete and to try to win. But now it's our opportunity to do that. It's our opportunity to go out there in the world and compete for heavenly rewards. 
heavenly rewards. You see, salvation is just the beginning. That's the floor. There are rewards that you and I can earn, that we can go for, that we can get while we're living on this, on this earth. A couple of weeks ago, think about the, uh, the story with the Americans and, and the Russians. You know, in the, in the, in the Olympics in 1980, and it was, the, it was the Americans, it was their most difficult test that they were ever going to face. But it was also the, most, the best moment for them to shine. It was the best opportunity for them to go out there and shine, and that's exactly what they did. And this is a great moment for us to be able to go out there and shine. And so here, here for the next few moments, I want to talk about two churches, two churches that uh, are mentioned in, uh, in, in Scripture. So if you have your Bible, turn to Revelation chapter 2. Revelation chapter 2. And uh, the whole chapter is talking, there's seven churches in all. But we're just going to talk about the first two, the church at Ephesus and the church at Smyrna. And the, uh, the title of my, my message today is the, uh, the Smyrna Award. We're, go- we're going to go for the Smyrna Award. That's what we're going to try to win. As believers, we're going to go out there and we're going to compete for the Smyrna Award. So uh, Revelation chapter 2, uh, starting in verse 1, what we, what, we, what we find out here is that one of these churches shines, is going to shine, and I kind of already gave that away. The other one doesn't. All right, and so we're going to find out what's going on here. So uh, verse 1, to the angel of the church in Ephesus write uh, these words are the words of him who holds the seven stars in his right hand and walks among the seven golden lampstands. He says, I know your deeds, your hard work, and your perseverance. I know that you cannot tolerate wicked people, that you have tested those who claim to be apostles but are not, and have found them false. You have persevered and have endured hardships for my name and have not grown weary. Yet, I hold this against you. You have forsaken the love that you had at first. Consider how far you have fallen. Repent and do the things you did at first. If you do not repent, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place. But you have this in your favor. You hate the practices of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. Verse 7 says, Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To the one who is victorious, I will give the right to eat from the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. So that's the church at Ephesus. Verse 8 says, To the angel of the church in Smyrna, These are the words of him who is the first, who is the first and the last, who died and came to life again. Verse 9, he says, I know your afflictions and your poverty, yet you were rich. I know about the slander of those who say they are Jews and are not, but are a synagogue of Satan. Verse 10 says, Do not be afraid of what you are about to suffer. I tell you, the devil will put some of you in prison to test you. And you will suffer persecution for ten days. Be faithful, even to the point of death. And I will give you life as your victor's crown. Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. The one who is victorious will not be hurt at all by the second death. All right, so here are the two churches. We've got the church in Ephesus. And God's, God has good things to say about the church of Ephesus, but he has one bad thing to say about the church of Ephesus. You have forsaken the one in whom you love first. He says, repent. If not, I will remove your lampstand. Well, that's the church that doesn't shine. Ephesus is the church that, that doesn't shine. And then we have the church at Smyrna. And he has nothing bad to say about the church at Smyrna, except you are going to experience persecution. But then he goes on to say, hey, don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. You're not going to be harmed. You're not going to be harmed by this this second death at all. So Smyrna, was. there were two churches, two out of the seven, that that received no no, uh, 
uh, correction in their letter. The other one was the church of Philadelphia. So the church of Smyrna is one of only two churches that received no correction, but it was also the most heavily persecuted church based on the reading. But it was also the most faithful church. Hey, congratulations. I got nothing bad to say about you, but you're the most persecuted church, but you're also the most faithful. Seems like there's a correlation there. It's, it's almost like you ever heard that saying, you find out what you're made of? You find out what you're made of when the persecution comes. You're either going to be found faithful or you're going to be like the church of Ephesus whose lampstand gets removed. Now, guess what? Here's the earthly reward that they get. You can't go to Ephesus. You, you can't go to this Ephesus. This Ephesus no longer exists. It's, it's all silted up. You, you can't go there. So exactly what he's talking about, his lampstand has been removed, and you can no longer visit. However, you can still go to Smyrna. It's got a different name. It's called, uh, oh, what's it called today? Izmir. It's called Izmir. But it was Smyrna. And, and you can go there today, and you can still go to the church at Smyrna today. And guess what? The Christians there are still under persecution. They're still experiencing persecution from the Muslims. But they've been found faithful. And their light and their lampstand is still burning, man. They're still just thousands of years later. And they're still, they're still going strong. And you can still find Christians there. But not only are they still around, verse 10 says that they will, they will receive the crown as your, they will receive uh, life as your victor's crown. They'll, they'll receive the crown of life. And now, there's a difference there between salvation. There's a difference between salvation and a reward. Okay, we see we, we see reward talked about, we see inheritance talked about, we see some other things talked about in Scripture, meaning that this is what you will receive on top of your salvation. So on top of their salvation, they're going to receive the crown of life. And so I want to talk about I want to talk about rewards for just a few moments here. Because we all we all like to be rewarded. We all like to be rewarded, especially uh, especially when we've accomplished something in the face of adversity. There's just something special about that reward when we've had to, when we've had to work hard to get it. We've had to, when we've had to face the best of the best, and we've beat the best of the best, it's like that reward is just a little bit sweeter. Talk about uh, that, that reward. We all like to receive bonuses at work or pay raises or promotions at work, especially when we felt like we've gone through some adversity at work, we like to see reward. We like to be rewarded that way. <laughs> Cindy and I, we're we're currently trying to uh, to clean up, clean our pool out, <laughs> and uh, and so we definitely want to see the reward of being able to swim in a in a clean, clear pool. And so we're we're working through that adversity, so that hopefully we can receive the reward of being able to swim in our swimming pool. Hopefully we're just days away and not weeks away, but, but we want to experience that. Young people, you want, to, you want to be able to experience the reward of receiving your diploma. You know, you, you faced adversity from kindergarten up to 12th grade. And, and, and you, got, you got bonus adversity this year with the virus. So, I mean, you guys definitely want to experience the reward of receiving your diploma, earning your college degree. Winning that championship game, man, you want to experience the reward for that. Finding tomatoes in your garden. I mean, some of us would love to be able to experience the reward of finding some tomatoes in our garden. Because there's adversity for some of us that try to grow gardens. Some of y'all, it's a piece of cake. But for some of us, it's adversity. It's hard. It's hard. So we'd like to see that. 
Retirement, huh, Randy? We want to get there. We want to be able to experience the reward of retirement for all the years of adversity that we've put into working for that company. Right? We want to experience rewards. We, we want to be rewarded. We love being rewarded. All right. We love to give gifts, right? We love to, we love to reward others. Matthew 7, 11 says this, If you then who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? So we like to be rewarded, and we serve a heavenly Father who likes to reward. Isn't that good? We serve a heavenly Father who wants to reward us. Some people think that their relationship with God is like, man, he's always looking down, just waiting for me to mess up. Waiting for me. Wait, he just can't wait to discipline me. No, God can't wait to reward you. Now, here's the problem. A lot of times we don't get that reward here on earth. Sometimes we do. A lot of times we do. But a lot of times God says, I'm gonna, you get your reward in heaven. Remember, we're, we're storing up treasures in heaven, not treasures on earth. So a lot of times we have to, we have to wait for our reward, and, and sometimes that's, that's hard too. But, but he is a God who loves to reward you. I, write that down. God wants to reward me. He looks for opportunities to reward me. So let's talk about rewards for a second. Again, verse 10 says that, 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 that the church, they're going to receive the crown of life as their reward. It's totally separate from uh, salvation, uh, heaven. Uh, heaven and the receiving of a reward is not the same thing. So a reward is in addition to heaven. All right? So there's, there's rewards that we get as we live life. So, so, so there's a connection between our life here and heaven. There's a connection. Some of us think that, okay, I'm living my life here. One day I'm going to die and then I'm going to go to heaven. It's like two totally separate things. But there's a connection. And it's how we live our life here is connected to what we're going to receive up there in heaven. And so heaven and rewards are two different things, but there's a big connection for both of them. And we're going to talk about the connection. You ready? All right, Luke chapter 14. Luke chapter 14, verse 12 and 13, it says this. It says, it's a whole story here on, on humility. And Jesus says this. He's talking to his disciples. He says, then Jesus said to his host, when you give a luncheon or dinner, do not invite your friends, your brothers or sisters, your relatives, or your rich neighbors. Because if you do, they may invite you back, and so you will be repaid. But when you do give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind. And you will be blessed. You'll be happy. You'll be happy if you invite those people. He says, although they cannot repay you, you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. You will, will receive a reward at the resurrection of the righteous. So what are we doing for those who can't repay us? What are we doing for those that, that can't repay us? Well, let me ask you this question. Who would you like to have to reward you? If I invite a bunch of you over for dinner, do I want my reward to be you inviting me back over to dinner at your house? I mean, I won't turn it down. But that's not the reward I want. I want the reward that God can give me. Even if I have to wait, even if I can't get the reward now, I want to get that reward when I get into heaven. And so I want to wait for, I want God's best. I want God's best for my life, whether it's here or in heaven. And so I want God's reward. I want God's reward. And so what are we doing for those who, who can't re, repay us? This, we'll call this the party connection. There's a connection between how I live my life in this, in this world and, and who I try to, to include into my life. Am I only surrounding myself with people who can repay me in like? Am I only surrounding myself with, with people who I think will give me 
better, return the favor? Or am I surrounding myself with people like who, who Jesus is talking about? Those that, man, they, they, they can't give me anything. They're the, they're the thing they can offer me on this earth. What am I doing for them? He says later on, he says, hey, as you do the least of these, you're doing it for me. And listen to me, when you're doing it for me, I'm going to reward you in heaven. You're going to get your reward in heaven. Look, look back at Luke chapter 6. Luke chapter 6, verse 22 and 23. It says, it says, blessed are you when people hate you, when they exclude you and insult you and reject your name as evil because of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy because great is your reward in heaven. For that is how their ancestors treated the prophets. All right, I almost titled this uh, message, uh, Leap for Joy. Because he's telling us, hey, reserve your most, uh, your, your happiest, your, your highest praise, your, your, your greatest excitement for those who hate you <laughs> because of me. Leap for joy. Be excited if they hate you. If they persecute you, be excited. Because great is your reward in heaven. You're going you're gonna to get it on this earth, man. You're going to get all kinds of people hating you, all kinds of people talking down to you. If you're going out there and blessing them in Jesus' name, talking about Jesus and how much Jesus loves them, they're going to hate you. And you're going to come up with these questions that are going to come up in your head. Is this worth it? Why am I even bothering them? I'm telling these people how much Jesus loves them, and all they're doing is hating me. Memorize the verse. Memorize it. I'm doing it because I'm great is my reward in heaven. In heaven. It's hard. It's hard to comprehend. I understand that. But if you can make it, It'll be worth it. He says rejoice in that day. So this, this right here, this is the Smyrna Award. This is the award that we're going after. The award that says we're going to experience persecution, but we're going to be rewarded for it. We're going to receive the crown of life. We're going to be blessed in heaven. But if we keep our eyes on all the hurt and all the, all the struggle in this life, we might start answering those questions with, nah, it's not worth it. I mean, they're getting what they deserve. I mean, the, the world's going the way that the Bible said it would go. I'm just going to let it happen. Then, you know what award we get then? Then we get the Ephesus Award. God's like, man, if you're not going to go out there and shine in the darkness, I'll just, man, I'll just kill your light. I'll just let you close up. There's plenty of churches out there that are going out there and shining the light in the darkness. That if you're not going to, I'll, I'll give you the Ephesus Award. I'll, I'll burn out that light. So that's the persecution connection. We've got the party connection, and now, now we've got the persecution connection. Let's look at the last one. This is the postponement connection, and it's Matthew 16, verse 24. I need to wrap this up. It says, Then Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. Whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me will find it. What good will it be for someone to gain the whole world yet forfeit their soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? We all know that part. How about this part? For the Son of Man is going to come in His Father's glory with His angels, and then He will reward each person according to what they have done. All right? That's the postponement. That's the part we've got to wait. We've got to wait for our reward. It says, deny yourself. Take up your cross. Follow me. Experience the persecution. Experience people hating you. Experience people 
doing all kinds of evil towards you because of me. But leap for joy. Be excited. Be blessed because great is your reward in heaven. Revelation 22, 12 says, look. One of the last verses in the Scripture, he says, look, I am coming soon, and my reward is with me to repay each person according to his work. Each person according to his work. So if you knew, let me ask you a question here, If you knew that the way you live your life today determines the rewards that God gives you in heaven, will it look different? Will your life look different if you were to live your life knowing that tomorrow, in eternity, is when I'll receive my reward? Will your life look any different? 1 Corinthians 2, verse 9 says this, No eye has seen, No ear has heard, no heart has conceived what God has in store for those who love Him. We have no idea what God has in store for us. We have no idea. Heaven alone, listen, heaven alone, if we do nothing else on this earth but go to heaven, it is going to be absolutely incredible. No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind can conceive what heaven is going to be like for us. It is going to be an absolute, beautiful, glorious, wonderful place. But then imagine it with God just handing us reward after reward after reward after reward because of the perseverance that we display down here, because of, of the letting our light shine in this darkness, being faithful to Him. And guess what? It's up to us. <laughs> we get to make that decision. We get to decide. God's leaving it out there for us. He's, he's, hey, here it is. I lay before you. Rewards, no rewards. What do you want? It's costly. Well, you know, the Bible says, hey, think about the cost. But I promise you, I promise you, I promise you, I promise you, it's worth it. Great is your reward in heaven. So I just want to encourage you tonight. I want to challenge you. Go after the Smyrna Award. Man, don't don't go after that Ephesus Award. We don't want that award. We want the Smyrna Award. We want to receive the reward in heaven for being faithful with our life on earth. That's all he's asking for is our faithfulness. Be faithful, and we will receive rewards in heaven. All right, I'm going to ask you to stand. Um, we're still we're still kind of waiting on uh, having a, an, an altar team up here, but uh, I hope tonight that you are uh, that you are encouraged. I, I was just. I was so excited just going through this message, knowing that, uh, man, God has so much uh, in store for us if we'll just be faithful to Him. And it is so hard in this life to comprehend. But I'm just believing that God has some great rewards for us if we'll go out there in the darkness and do our very, very best to shine to not give up, to try to take as many as we can with us. That's what it's all about. We know the end of the story. We know where this world's going. But we got to do all that we can to go out there and shine. And this is the moment, listen, when we shine the brightest. And think about all the rewards that you like to have in this life. All the different things that you do to to get rewards. That's how we answer the question, is it worth it? We answer it based upon the reward that we get from whatever we're talking about. Is that new car worth it? Well, what's the reward for getting that new car? Is that job worth it? Well, what's the reward for working in that job? Is he or she worth it? Well, what's the reward for living with that person for the next 50 years? 
That's how, we, that's how we answer questions. What's the reward that we get? Well, I'm just telling you, great is your reward in heaven for those that love him and are found faithful during this time, during this life. So I'm asking you to close your head, <laughs> close your eyes and close your head and close your head and bow your eyes. I want you to think about that for just a few few seconds. What am I willing to do to gain that reward? Am I willing to bring people into my life, into my circle? Am I willing to invite people into my world that they can't do anything for me? There's nothing that they can return to me. There's no reward for letting them into my life. Will you think about that? Will you think about expanding your horizon, your world, and allowing people into it? That can't, they can't give you anything? And will you think about what's it, what's it worth going out there and, and shining the love of Jesus in this world? Am I willing to be hated? Can I handle that? Can I, can I handle being rejected in this life? See, a lot of these questions that we've been asking these last four weeks are important for us to answer now because, listen, they're coming. You, you don't know this, but we're, tomorrow, <laughs> you might wake up tomorrow, and this world is against us. It is, it is against us. Father, we love you. We're so thankful that we serve a God that longs to bless us, that longs to give us reward after reward, that longs to fill our heavenly trophy case with so many awards. Father, it's worth it. It's worth it for us to bring people into our life that we don't need. It's worth it for us, Father, to, to go out there and, and face persecution knowing that when we enter into heaven, that we're going to receive a great, awesome reward. Father, I pray for, for our church that we be found faithful here in Sulphur, here in Louisiana, and all over this country and all over this world, Father, that we can be found faithful because I want us to receive the same reward that the church in Smyrna received. I want us to be found faithful during the most difficult of persecution because I want to receive the greatest reward that you have. God, help us to search our hearts. Help us to answer these questions. God, will my life look any different based upon knowing that I can have a reward in heaven? What am I going to do to go after that reward? Father, we love you. We're so thankful that you love us unconditionally, that you have a bright, bright, eternal future in store for us. We love you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you again for joining us for today's online service. If you have any prayer requests, any needs, or even just a comment about the message, you can leave that in the comment section below this video. Maybe you don't feel comfortable with leaving a comment. You can send a direct message to the Gathering's Facebook page. We hope that this message has blessed you and you have a good week.